So going into 2020, Blackmagic made it really easy to work remote. It always was possible within DaVinci Resolve, but now they made it even easier with Blackmagic Cloud. And with Blackmagic Cloud, that was only really one piece of the puzzle because Blackmagic Cloud just allows you to take your project library, share it with others, as well as work on the same projects with multiple people in multiple locations. But like I said, that was only one piece of the puzzle. The other portion of that is actually getting the media out to everyone else. So think of your pictures, your audio, as well as the videos. With that said, that now brings us to the Blackmagic Cloud Pod. This is a simplified network storage device with a few unique post-production features. What's cool about the Blackmagic Cloud Pod compared to the others is that you can use your own storage, anything that you can typically mount to your computer over USB-C, we can plug into this device. Uh, as long as it doesn't need software or any specialty hardware outside of just plugging it in. So think of the external SSDs that you would typically be storing stuff on. I know a lot of the Blackmagic cameras have the ability of a USB-C port that you can plug into the cameras and start uh, recording right from there. You can then plug it into these new devices. And with that, they will then share it out to however you have your syncing provider set up. And I, we can go into that a little bit here, but the Blackmagic Cloud Pod itself, you're just going to get the device itself. It has a couple of ports on the back of it. It has two USB-C. It also has a 10 gigabit ethernet port that you have as well as you can plug it into the wall. And it also has an HDMI port. That HDMI port is just something that you're really not gonna use a lot, but it just allows you to see the activity of the device uh, as you can see here, some read and writes. Now it really is going to come down to the speed of the equipment that you're using. Obviously, whatever the slowest link is in the chain. So it's either the SSDs you have plugged in, maybe the cable that you have, or the connection from the pod to your network, or if you're on a laptop, the connection from your wireless access point to your laptop, whichever the slowest link is, obviously that's how fast it's going to go. If you're working with really big files, so like let's say stuff for like VFX and compositing stuff, those files tend to get really, really big and have really, really big data rates. Um, you might wanna go up to Blackmagic Cloud Store Mini is one offering that they currently have. That's going to be a bit faster. I'll have a video available on that. And with the name of simplicity, I think is going to be the first pro versus con of the device. Currently can't add any users to it. So it comes with just a guest user. So the username for it, if you're on Windows, is just going to be workgroup slash guest. And then the password is just going to be guest. And then you can log in. And it doesn't look like there's any way currently to set up any type of users or disable the ability for different people to log into it. If you are working with a smaller group of people and they're all you're all on the same local network, it shouldn't be an issue, but it does have the possibility of potentially being an issue to log directly into it. As far as syncing to third-party providers, that is actually super simple. You just have a user interface that pops up. Do you wanna go into Dropbox or Google Drive? Uh, you just log in with the normal credentials to get into that account. Once you're in the account, you can go through the different folders that are in your uh, current account. And that's something that I'll quickly go over. If you've ever used Google Drive and you used any of the Google Drive workspace, that's kind of like their business side of uh, Google Drive you have the ability to share drives. And so that is making large pools of data that are shareable and that you can kind of segment for different groups of people within your workspace on the Google platform. Those shared drives you cannot see when you log in, even if the user has access to it. So that was something that on a prior video, someone did comment and it's something that I did see. I wasn't sure if it was a use case that people would really use, but it is something Something to be to to be or to take note of, uh, if you were to share files, that is perfectly fine as long as they are on your main drive account and not the shared drive. If you've never heard of shared drive, don't even worry about it. It is another layer of complexity that this device doesn't even use, but them just being shared files on your uh, drive, that's all you need to be able to see them and to access them. The one big difference between Google Drive and Dropbox is 
when you go to share things between, uh, let's say a Dropbox account. So if I have a bunch of files and I share those files with you, from the looks of it, if I share that 500 gigs with you, it also consumes 500 gigs of your available space on your account. As far as Google Drive goes, it doesn't. If I'm the owner of the files, I share those files with you, they only take away from my uh, 500 gigs and it doesn't use anything on yours because I am the owner of them. The reason why I'm thinking of this is let's say you have multiple customers that you're just the editor for, you can have all of them put stuff into their drive accounts, then share that folder with you and you don't need to have an extremely large drive account to be able to uh, have this whole ecosystem work. If you were on Dropbox, you would have to have you know the match, uh, all of your customers and the amount of data that they are sharing with you. I wanted to see if there was any difference and it seemed like that was the biggest difference. Outside of that, they both work exactly the same. Uh, within the operating system for the cloud, so the cloud pod, cloud store, whichever ones, cloud store mini, all of them, uh, you have the abilities to pick different folders on the device itself as well as in the cloud. As far as uh, making things a little easier, when you install cloud store operating or a program on your computer, they also provide you the proxy generator light. That is just a slimmed down version of the proxy generator that you would get if you have a studio version of DaVinci Resolve. Just a couple of little feature differences between the two. The other thing that was really nice to see there is as long as you keep the, the folder structure, how the proxies work within uh, DaVinci Resolve, as well as how the proxy generator makes them. So it'd just be like a, a folder that's proxy right next to the uh, all of the files. Uh, if you leave that like set up that way, you there's an option that you can set it up so that it just syncs proxy files. So if you were to be working with another editor and you don't wanna send them the raw file, so if they're just an editor, you could set it up so that they just get the proxy file so it's less stuff to upload to Google Drive or Dropbox. Thought that it was a really cool feature set to see in there, especially if you don't have a lot of bandwidth for upload. Uh, it will it'll make that process a little easier. You can only see that there is a lot of growth here. Currently, there are the two syncing uh, offerings, the Dropbox and Google Drive. They did state that there were going to be all of the big players, so I'm guessing that there's probably gonna be the Microsoft Azure, something of that extent, because a lot of people use that. Uh, potentially even um, something with Amazon. Currently, I would say if you're gonna buy it, know what it currently can do and only buy it based off of that, but I have high hopes for different things. Like it would be really cool to see one of those devices have like an ASICS chip in there that was like a specialty chip that would be able to automatically do the conversions of proxy files. That would be pretty cool to just have files on there and then have them uh, have the ability some way within an interface. If it's, let's say DaVinci Resolve has a, create into proxy file button, that would be super cool. And then in the uh, st our storage unit, it would automatically convert it into a proxy file, something like, I don't know. There's a lot of potential that is there. Well, you know, This is only the beginning of this, so definitely excited to see where this could potentially go. There's lots of ideas in my head and uh, we'll see what, I don't know how much they can actually add to the hardware that's currently available in those units, but uh, it'll be nice to see the different iterations and ideas that come out in the future. But if you, if this kind of fits your need, then I would say definitely go for it. In the future, I will be making a video kind of covering possibilities of working with one of these devices, as well as if you already have like a Signology, a QNAP or something like a TrueNAS, how we could use our main NAS devices and have them all work together. I'm gonna be going over a video showing how that would all be possible if you already have the hardware. So that's the Blackmagic Cloud Pod. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you guys are interested, my YouTube channel is really about DaVinci Resolve, primarily uh, Fusion, but everything DaVinci Resolve I kind of cover. I also have a whole website dedicated to that. So there's about, there's like 500 pages on my blog going over all different aspects of DaVinci Resolve. I also offer certification courses if that's something that you're interested in, as well as pre-made uh, assets that you'd be able to use in your next production. But with that being said, my name's Justin. Thanks so much for watching. Until next one, guys, have a good one. Peace.